My job today is to distract you from Apple Watch Series 7 videos and the upcoming MacBook event on Monday, so we're going back to iPhones for a minute here, just so that we can dwell on the inevitable doom of the naming scheme. Personally, I think the naming has been a train wreck ever since 2017. It was pretty consistent every year before that. 3G, 3GS4, 4S5, 5S6, 6S7, and then there was this miraculous falling apart of words where there were tens, but they were spelt X's and there were R's thrown in there, and now Apple's kind of directing the train wreck in a more direct way going back to 11, 12, 13. But that's making us think, how long can Apple keep this numbering scheme going? And I'm going to do my best to provide a solution. Let's begin. So probably the first most obvious question is why not just keep going in the direction we've been going, right? Just another higher number. That means next year we get iPhone 14 and then 15, 16, 17, 18. You notice that especially with 17, I don't know why, maybe there's just a tad more letters in that word, things start to fall apart when you want to start talking about iPhone 17 Pro Max. That's making a lot of people think Apple cannot keep this number scheme going forever, right? Like at a certain point, iPhone 23, 24, 25 starts to lose a bit of its wow factor and doesn't really look as good in marketing. So a lot of people are speculating and providing alternative options that I will acknowledge in this video because I've talked about them in the past. For one, dropping the numbers entirely. So we just start going with iPhone 2021 edition, but you put that in parentheses, that way Apple doesn't really have to address it on stage. They don't have to print it on the side of their packages or anything. They can just say the latest iPhone and you should check out the 2022 version of of the iPhone that's just been refreshed. From a simplistic, minimal point of view, it works pretty well. If you're going for, uh, you know, easy to type and easy to get attention to, it makes sense, but it becomes very, very difficult when we're comparing previous generation iPhones, or specifically when comparing tech specs on Apple's website, you start having to use a lot of parentheses and saying first generation, second generation, third generation, to the point that we're inevitably left with the idea that you just have to say the year with every category. So in this case, Apple might go the route of iPhone 2021 edition, and then you would have iPhone mini 2021, iPhone Pro 2021, and perhaps even iPhone Pro Max 2021. So you realize pretty quickly, if you drop the number in replacement of the year, it doesn't actually really save that many syllables. It doesn't really save you that much time because you're left with having to bring up a fairly large number every time you refer to when the phone came out. Especially if we get into the iPhone 2027 edition, which sounds Sounds crazy, but it's only six years away. So I'm not entirely sure that dropping the numbers is the best way to go, which is why my advice is going to be that Apple actually move into the direction that they have kind of already gone with their iPads and MacBook lines. If you want my advice, if you know they made me CEO of Apple right now, here's what I would do. Similar to how the iPad Air is not the lightest iPad, and when Apple refreshed the MacBook Air and there was still a 12 inch MacBook sitting around, the MacBook Air was not the lightest MacBook in the lineup. I'm gonna go ahead and say the default iPhone option. I know this will never happen. I'm just saying in my perfect world, the 6.1 inch, you know, entry level iPhone should actually be rebranded to iPhone Air. It will be a new name. It'll be recognizable, but it won't fall into the same trend of 13, 14, 15, but people will know it and recognize it and it will fit in with the rest of Apple's lineup between iPads and MacBook Airs. Now we have an iPhone Air and this is Air in the sense that it's supporting wireless and it's fairly light alongside not quite a pro model, so it doesn't deserve a pro suffix, but it's premium enough to fit along with that Air mentality that the iPad Air and MacBook Air carry along with them. At least in the case of the iPads, the iPad Air is not the entry model. It's definitely not the cheapest. In fact, it's kind of right dead set in the middle, but Air is just another suffix that Apple can embrace as a sign of quality. That way we have iPhone Air, iPhone Mini, iPhone Pro, and then at the very top, I'm actually going to take the one good idea Apple had from AirPods Max, nothing to do with the actual product, between lightning and no lossless audio and the stupid charging smart bra case. No, actually, the one thing that I thought was a decent idea with AirPods Max is they didn't bring the Pro along with it. We've had AirPods and now there's AirPods Pro and AirPods Max. I actually think the Max mentality could simplify a lot of Apple's naming schemes between iPads and Macs moving forward. It's meant to be a defining 
limiting factor of like, okay, so Pro is a little bit better, but Max is exactly that. It's taking the product to the maximum, giving you the best of the best. So that's why they call it AirPods Max. And I like that suffix approach opposed to doing AirPods Pro Max, which is just too big a mouthful. And honestly, I've still never been a fan of iPhone 11 Pro Max, 12 Pro Max, 13 Pro Max. Because there's only one Max option, why do we need to bring Pro along with the naming, right? I would rather just say iPad Max instead of iPad Pro 12.9 inch or iPhone 13 Pro Max. Just say iPhone 13 Max, okay? You know the generation of the phone and it's taken to the maximum. So moving forward, we drop all the numbers, slim down on naming a tad bit, and now we can refer to them the same way we refer to iPads and Macs, which is, at least in the regard of iPads, we add a little number for the sake of a generational upgrade, but Apple doesn't put that number out there. So like in these videos and in the tech community, we say things like iPad Air 3, iPad Air 4, but you notice Apple never really embraces that naming on their website. They always just say third gen or fourth gen. And I think that actually simplifies things a lot because we don't have to say 2022, 2027, 2028. That gets old really quickly if we have to refer to the year. But if we can kind of reset everything when we drop the numbers and for the first year Apple does this, they can just say, check out iPhone mini, iPhone Air, iPhone Pro, iPhone Max. There's all your naming, pretty simple. And then the following year we can say iPhone mini second gen, iPhone Air second gen. And online we can say things like iPhone Air 2, iPhone Air 5. And I don't know how long we can keep that going because eventually we'll probably back ourselves into the same corner, iPhone Pro 17th generation. But it at least is a solution that will hold us over for a couple of decades until we can think of some other better name to run with. But I don't know, there has to be a better solution than having to say the year with every generation. So as you can tell with this video, no solution is perfect. All of them have benefits and disadvantages. So what do you guys think is going to make the most sense for iPhone naming moving forward? I'm pretty sure I make like eight to 10 of these videos every year, but I think it's a fascinating subject that needs more attention because Apple could certainly use our help with it. I don't want to have to keep saying iPhone 14 Pro Max in the future. So feel free to let me know your ideas down below. This is your Apple Sheep here. I'll see you guys in the next one.